Epiderm is a normal human cell derived reconstructed in vitro model of the human epidermis developed by the MatTech Corporation. The ECVAM validated epiderm skin irritation test protocol replaces traditional animal based testing of products such as cosmetic raw materials and industrial agents that will come in contact with human skin. This test begins on day zero when the skin irritation kit and epiderm tissue arrives in the lab and is subsequently preconditioned in assay medium. Following an overnight incubation on day one, the apical surface of the epiderm tissue is exposed for one hour with a putative irritant compound and then the irritant is removed with a washing step. On day two, after a 24 hour incubation, the culture insert is placed in fresh media and the old media can be used for analysis of released cytokines and chemokines. The tissue is reacted with a compound known as MTT, which is converted by mitochondrial reductasis to a dark purple from and salt, providing a readout for cell viability. A lack of dark purple color in the sample is an indicator of decreased viability, and when the calorimetric readout for a test compound is less than 50% of negative controls, the test compound can be classified as an irritant. Hi, I'm Helena Kandarova from Mate Corporation. Today we will show you procedure for in vitro skin irritation testing using reconstructed human skin model epiderm. This procedure, depending on regulatory requirements, can be used as full or partial replacement of in vivo rabbit skin irritation test. This new in vitro procedure can be used for hazard identification and labeling of chemicals and raw cosmetic materials. So let's get started. In this episode of toxicity tests, we're going to look at skin irritation stroke corrosion tests. These first few slides are from the Alltox website. This first slide reads, skin irritation and skin corrosion refer to localized toxic effects resulting from a topical exposure of the skin to a substance. The second paragraph reads, The globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals defines skin irritation as the production of reversible damage to the skin following the application of a test substance for up to four hours and defines skin corrosion as the production of irreversible damage to the skin, namely visible necrosis through the epidermis and into the dermis, following the application of a test substance for up to four hours. So these tests are obviously acute toxicity tests rather than chronic toxicity tests. This second slide describes the animal tests. It reads, a test substance is applied to the shaved bare skin about six centimeters squared of healthy young adult albino rabbits and the area is covered with gauze. It is the OECD test guideline TG404 acute dermal irritation corrosion test which is sometimes known as the Dray's rabbit skin irritation corrosion test. One point to briefly dwell on before we take a look at the actual OECD test is the fourth sentence of this slide. It reads, the GHS, which is the Globally Harmonized System, reports that animal skin irritation and corrosion responses are quite variable. So one wonders if there's variation between different species, it's going to be quite difficult, surely, to extrapolate the results to humans. Anyway, that's just a thought. This is the first page of the OECD guideline for the testing of acute dermal irritation corrosion. It's test 404. This slide shows the principle of the in vivo test 404. It reads, the substance to be tested is applied in a single dose to the skin of an experimental animal. Untreated skin areas of the test animal serve as the control. The degree of irritation stroke corrosion is read and scored at specified intervals and is further described in order to provide a complete evaluation of the effects. The duration of the study should be sufficient to evaluate the reversibility or 
irreversibility of the effects observed. Point 7 reads, animals showing continuing signs of severe distress and or pain at any stage of the test should be humanely killed and the substance assessed accordingly. The reality is that any substance that causes irreversible damage to the skin is obviously going to cause a lot of pain and distress to the animal. So I feel that they just put that in to make themselves sound a little bit more humane and compassionate than they actually are. Anyway, getting on to the next slide, this is just about the selection of animals and the preferred animal is the albino rabbit. This last slide from the OECD test for 04 just talks about the evaluation of the results. It reads the dermal irritation scores should be evaluated in conjunction with the nature and severity of the lesions, the lesions of the injuries, and their reversibility or lack of reversibility. So let's now look at the Canadian Council on Animal Care's website to see the alternatives to the animal test for assessing skin irritation stroke corrosion. In the left hand column of this slide it says conventional test method. Acute dermal irritation, stroke corrosion, and then in brackets it says Dre's rabbit skin irritation test. OECD TG404, i.e. the one that we've just been looking at. Then the other columns, it says name and description, validation status, regulatory status, effects on animals, and the date. So if we look here, we can see that for skin irritation, there are two alternative tests. One's called EpiSkin and one's called EpiDerm. Um, they've both been validated, endorsed as valid by the European Centre for the Validation of Alternative Methods. And obviously it's the one, two, three, four, fifth column effect or potential effect on animal use that we are most interested in and it says for the epi skin replacement you know it seems like full replacement or less good is reduction when part of a tiered testing strategy that results in use of fewer animals so that's just the R reduction so that's not so good but full replacement if that's what it's signifying that is great and the epiderm is similar. It says replacement or reduction. So hopefully those two tests will completely replace the Dre's rabbit skin irritation tests in the future. So let's go on now to look at skin corrosion and the alternatives. So this first test for the replacement of skin corrosion tests with rabbits is called Corositex and it enables the replacement for testing of acid and bases which is least to start. Let's go on to see what other tests there are for skin corrosion. This test called Transcutaneous Electrical Resistance Test in Vitro Skin Corrosion it's not really a full animal replacement test because it uses a killed rat even though the rat is not going to have to endure a live experiment which is why they call this ex vivo instead of in vivo that's the name that they give to that kind of test anyway obviously it is better than being experimented on while you're still alive however it's not really what we're looking for in the animal rights community anyway it says reduction skin from one rat may be used to test up to five chemicals and then it's regarded as a refinement because it says it uses killed instead of live animals this slide shows the human skin model test epi skin Epiderm and Skin Ethic. So there's three companies there with three different tests, which have all been validated, endorsed as valid by the European Centre for the Validation of Alternative Methods, and the US has also validated these tests. 
Uh, let's have a look. It says in the EU it's a full replacement test, so that is fantastic. In America it's a reduction test. It says substances identified as corrosive will not progress to animal tests. So in, in, in a sense that sounds like it's a full replacement test as well because if it is shown that they are corrosive, if a chemical is corrosive under one of these alternative tests, that chemical will not progress to the animal tests. I'm just going to look at two more slides from the Autox website to conclude this piece. Now this second paragraph reads, A number of validated non-animal methods to determine skin corrosion are available. Some regulatory agencies may still be requesting confirmatory animal testing on a case-by-case -case basis. However, the use of existing data and a tiered in vitro approach in conjunction with an intelligent selection of tests should be sufficient. So out of all the toxicity tests we've looked at so far, it seems the skin irritation corrosion tests are a long way along the line to full replacement. So it does appear that this area of toxicity testing could be the first area that completely drops animal testing for ascertaining toxicity values. Anyway, let's look at the last slide now. This last slide from the Autox website is quite encouraging. It reads, validated in vitro methods are available for skin irritation testing without animals for the hazard assessment of most agents within the EU. However, the total elimination of animals for skin irritation testing depends upon the acceptance of the validated in vitro methods by the regulatory authorities. So for testing for skin irritation, I feel we're nearly there. We've nearly replaced the animal tests with alternative tests. The last paragraph reads, In vitro methods for skin corrosion are sufficient for both hazard and risk assessment purposes in the EU and for many regulatory purposes in the US. Acceptance of in vitro data for skin corrosion depends on the regulatory authority and a case can usually be made for its acceptance. So that looks encouraging again. It's apparently easier to do the test for skin corrosion than it is skin irritation. And as skin corrosion is much more painful for the animals, that is a good thing. But for both skin corrosion and for skin irritation, it looks like we have nearly gained the full replacement of animal tests with the alternative tests. It just needs a little bit more of a push and I'm sure the regulatory authorities will accept the alternative tests instead of the animal tests, which will be a great thing but as we have seen through the whole of this piece on toxicity tests, that's only really the beginning.